everyone. Welcome back. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to kick the tripod that quickly. <laughs> Hi, I'm Krista Namdahl, and welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is episode 670, and we are here live in uh, Southwest Florida in my studio this morning. If you're joining me live, please say hello. Hi, Thea and Chris. Uh, I'll wait. For, I'll wait for people to show up. Hi Val, good morning. I can. Hi Lisa, good morning. Welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is episode 670. Hi Grace, hi Christine, hi Olivia. Good morning. Hi Julie. Hi Naomi, good morning. Happy Thursday, everybody. Hi Carrie, good morning. Hi, Pamela. Good morning. Wait for people to pop over from pre-chat and notifications. I've got lots of fun things to talk to you about today. Hi, Cynthia. Good morning. Thank you, Sharon. I love this dress. It's one of those faux uh, wrap dresses. This one, it's around $20 or so on Amazon, and I have it in lots of colors. This is the violet. I think I have it in royal blue, and it comes, oh, I didn't stand up tall enough for you could see the hem. It's about, I don't know, two inches above my knee, so I would not call that a mini skirt, um, but it is above the knee. You can see my knee, my entire kneecap. Um, it's very comfortable. It's one of those stretchy t-shirt materials, so you know how I feel about that. Extremely comfortable, and it has that faux wrap look, so I think it's very, very flattering um, on, especially for someone like me that's curvy. I think that wrap, that wrap dress silhouette is extremely flattering. At least I think so. <laughs> it's my opinion. <laughs> Doesn't mean you have to have the same opinion. Um, Sharon, you're 4'11". I'm 5'9", so the dress will be longer on you for sure. Uh, oh, thanks, Julie. Yeah, I decorated the wall behind me with colors of Be So Baby yarn. So we've got some blues over here, some reds and pinks, purples, and then rainbow on the end. I can name the colors if you like, starting with navy, peacock teal, Splash, Prince, Jade, Mint, Peach, Coral, Watermelon, Cherry, Bubblegum, Prince, Silver Lavender, Periwinkle, Eggplant, Sugar Plum, Violet, Cobalt Blue, Emerald Green, Spring Green, Sunshine Yellow, Tangerine, and Watermelon. Uh, did I get that right? Yeah, I guess I put watermelon up there twice. Oh, well. <laughs> anyway, speaking of Be So Baby yarn, we have, uh, I have announced the Mystery Crochet Along yesterday. I know I mentioned a little bit of it uh, yesterday morning on the podcast. It is going to be a scarf. It is going to be called Poppy. It uses Be So Baby yarn, and I did um, upload the introduction part of the pattern yesterday so you can download the pattern now obviously it's the beginning of the of a mystery crochet along so at this point you're just going to get your material list in the pattern excuse me and it does tell you on what day each of the parts of the pattern will be released the first part of the pattern will be released on the first Monday in September, I believe that's the 7th. It's listed on the pattern page. Maybe I can find it really quickly. Um, I'm pretty sure it says September 7th, but I'd hate to misspeak. Um, hi, Gay. Hi, Samantha. Hi, Rachel. Thank you so much. Thank you to everybody for your compliments about my hair today. Good old-fashioned hot rollers, my favorite uh, way of curling my hair. It's kind of the only way I know how to curl my hair. Every time I try to curl my hair in a different way, it just doesn't work out. Hot rollers have been the way I curl my hair my whole life. Anyway, so I have, uh, and I found a new mousse that works really well for my hair too. I should probably, and I did buy it on Amazon, so I should probably share it um, in my Amazon shop. For those of you that have really fine hair, it is a lightweight mousse that does not, um, 
make get heavy on my hair and it is one of the only things that allows my hair to not only curl but stay curled so I will um, I will share that in my Amazon shop and then tell you about it tomorrow where was I going with that um Oh, the mystery crochet along. Thank you, Judy. It starts on September 7th. So if you download the pattern now and find out what kind of, how much yarn you need and all that stuff, there is plenty of time to order yarn in order to be ready for the mystery crochet along part one to be released. Um, then each week thereafter, there'll be one release. So you'll have a week to do each of the parts. It's a four part mystery crochet along. And what else? It has... I said it's a scarf. It uses Be So Baby yarn. The main color, you'll need five balls. And then the three um, extra colors, you'll need two balls each. For my five color main color, I did Sandcastle in Be So Baby yarn. And then for my three colors that only use two balls, I use Tropical Punch, Peach, and Burgundy. Oh, thanks, Julie. Yeah, someone asking me about my nail polish. I'm wearing the Vinylux nail polish that um, Judy is posting a link to right now. And it this is colorway, oh gosh, what's it called? Uh, cake pop? No, something. Pop rock pink. Pop rock pink. <laughs> I love it. It's so cute. Um, oh, and so I didn't bring those colors of yarn in here this morning. If it's necessary, I could um, go grab them. But you, if you follow the link to the pattern, I did the photo for the like the mystery pattern shows all four of the colors that I use, so you can see how pretty they look together. I also have some new colors of Be So Sporty and Be So Fine yarn to show you this morning. So most of the Be So Sporty colors that I'm going to show you are restock colors. So if you were on the waiting list for them, they're back in stock. And if you didn't go on the waiting list but you were waiting for them, that's fine too because they're back in stock so I know a lot of people were very excited to see chocolate truffles come back and Chantilly lace and charcoal and sandcastle oh those even look really cute together don't they and what's your and plumeria plumeria is back in stock this is a, a soft yellow with a tiny bit of blush peach running through it super cute chocolate truffles Chantilly lace charcoal and sandcastle then the two new colors in be so sporty yarn are mint which is a beautiful light pastel green that would look good in anything and a bright aloha blue this is definitely deeper than bahama blue and uh more blue than caribbean turquoise so it does go it is more blue than green for sure and it's just like that medium blue like Reminds me of a Hawaiian blue, or maybe even like some sport teams use this color too. But even in um, muscle cars, this kind of blue they usually call Aloha blue. So these are the colors, the new colors and back in stock colors for Be So Sporty yarn. Okay, starting from the left here, it's mint, sandcastle, chocolate truffles, charcoal, chantilly lace, plumeria, and Aloha blue. Those are all in stock, photos up and all ready to go. So if you wanted to grab those now, you can. And then I have a new limited edition color of Be So Fine yarn, and this is called Ablaze. How gorgeous is this? So bright and vibrant, right? I get uh, requests a lot for a bright orange. And, you know, sometimes I do things, sometimes I don't, I need to stay true to myself, right? So as an artist, it is, as a business owner, it is wonderful to get feedback from customers and get requests for what people want. But to stay true to myself as an artist, I have to figure out when it makes sense. And this makes sense. So we've got some of that gorgeous mulberry color and some burnt orange and some softer yellow and just wow <laughs> it is so amazing and that's called a blaze gosh i mean what wouldn't look cute in this colorway a shawl a scarf uh a, a pullover a top it's just beautiful so that's the limited edition colorway that is available in be so fine yarn right now 
It's called a blaze. Then the two new colors in sporty are Aloha Blue and Mint. And then back in stock are Plumeria, Chantilly Lace, Charcoal, Chocolate Truffles, and Sandcastle. I know a lot of the neutrals go out really quickly, so very excited to have those back in stock. And I'm going to move these out of the way now. Well, I guess they can sit right here. Does anybody have any questions before I move on? A Blaze is in Be So Fine yarn. The rest of the yarns that I showed are Be So Sporty yarn. Just wait and see if anyone has any other questions. And then we'll be moving on. If you wanted to, uh, if you want more information about this, this, if you weren't at the podcast yesterday, we had a great uh, talk and I did a great demo about how to pin your uh, shawls when you're blocking. And so if you haven't, if you didn't get a chance to see it yet, that would be episode 669 of the podcast. And today we're going to do another demo on our you call that a demo? I don't know. We're going to do something else on the board today. Um, let's see. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Naomi. Thank you, everybody. Uh, good morning, Marsha. Good morning. Do I do anything special to keep my sleeves looking good during the normal laundering process of my dress? Um, which dress are you talking about? Are you talking about the one I'm wearing? This one doesn't really have sleeves. So I'll wait a second to see what Wendy is specifically talking about, because I would be more than happy to answer your question. Anything that, I mean, just in general, if you're asking about sleeves getting pulled out of place in the laundering process, if what you're washing is delicate, I would recommend that you hand wash it instead of putting it in the washing machine. And if that's not an option for you, I would also consider putting your sleeves, uh, putting your garment in a laundry bag. Ah, the demi sleeve dress. Yeah, I had no idea that was what you were talking about. Anyway, um, if you want to wash something like that in the washing machine, I would put it in a laundry bag first, or you could hand wash it. I personally put that dress which is a cro which is a store bought dress with crochet sleeves on it. I put mine in a laundry bag before putting it in the washing machine. I could hand wash it too, but uh, most of the time it goes in the washing machine in a laundry bag. Anytime you have something that's delicate, whether it's handmade crochet or knitting, store bought lace, machine made lace, delicate fibers, anything that you think is could get snagged or damaged with at being agitated with other things, the first line of defense is a laundry bag. Even separating out all your things in their own laundry bags or separating out other people's things. Like if you want to do laundry for more than one person, that's an another great reason to have a laundry bag. Put everybody's clothing in their own laundry bags. But um, I've never had to reblock the sleeves. They just stay fine, but I don't put it in the dryer. I lay things flat or hang them up to dry most of the time because I feel like the dryer is also extremely damaging to fibers. Again, whether they are store-bought fibers, man-made fibers, or handmade garments, I feel like uh, the dryer and the heat is very damaging. The dryer is great for sterilizing things, right? Um, great for sheets and things like, and towels, but it, when it comes to my clothing, I prefer to hang things to dry or lay them flat to dry. So when you're doing that, you can reshape something as it's drying, which I've never had to do anything more than that for those sleeves. So that is a great question. Um, if you feel like your sleeves don't come out right, then yes, you could absolutely reblock them. But laying flat to dry and just shaping something out is more than enough. Let's see. Ah, Wendy just finished making those sleeves. Yes, so that is fresh on your mind today. That's wonderful. Hi, Luna. Good morning. Okay, so the next thing I was going to talk about today is some questions about projects that are constructed differently. Well, let me fix that. Okay, so for example, the Fernanda top is a crochet pattern that is worked side to side, meaning we cast on vertically 
not cast on, we start vertically and we work back and forth in rows going side to side. In the Giselle top, we start at the neck edge and we work down and increase in pattern. So let's, let me show you both of those constructions on the board. So we're gonna talk Fernanda and Giselle. Okay, so Fernanda, we started with those big flower stitches, right? And then we work back and forth in rows. And then finish off with our flowers and this worked side to side with no shaping within the pattern. Are you able to see that okay? Yeah, it looks like you're able to see that okay. Then with the Giselle, we started with the smallest amount of stitches at the neck edge. And as we worked down, we increased within the stitch pattern to create an A-line shape and then added an edging and gussets which allowed us to have a sleeve hole opening. And then we added a sleeve and then we added a sleeve, but this one was worked top down. So this one's worked sideways with no shaping. And then this way, this one is worked with shaping and worked down. Now, the reason why I wanted to start with the components of these two designs is because I get questioned. I, my top is not operating today, cooperating today, sorry. Uh, anyway, so. <laughs> okay. I get asked an awful lot about, can I take, I like this top, but I like this, I like something about this better than this top. Can I apply this to this one? And I get questions like this all the time. And you know, when you're comparing apples to apples, it's easy. When you're comparing apples to oranges, it gets a little harder. So recently I was asked, I like the vertical stripes. So somebody said, I like the vertical stripes in this one. Can I do this one side to side instead? Because she liked the vertical stripes on this one, but she wanted to do this top, but in vertical stripes. And so my first reaction would be, just turn it in the other direction and do it? No, that's not gonna work. And why? Because it if you're just comparing apples to apples, no, it's not going to immediately work because there's shaping. So what would happen if we did this one sideways? Where's my pen? If we just turn this one sideways, you'd end up having a top that's shorter on one side and longer on the other like that, right? That's not gonna work. But if you wanted to do something where you get like the, if you wanted to do this on the side and pick one of these stitch patterns. So for example, the stitch pattern starts at a mul as a multiple of three, it grows into a multiple of four, and then it grows again into a multiple of five. If you wanted to extract one of those only and create a boxy top like this, without shaping and use only one of those stitch patterns, then yes, you could. Now, is it going to look like this and have that A-line shape? No, but is it going to have the stitch pattern that you like on this one, but in the silhouette and shape of this one? Yes. Do you see what I'm saying? I wanna wait a second and see um, how everybody feels about what I've said so far, because I can give more examples of different ways that you could modify these, but I want to make sure you understand where I'm going at the moment. Good, I'm seeing yeses so far, so that's good. Because the well, what I'm trying to explain is that there are elements that you can take of different projects and apply them to other projects. But unless, what yarns for them? 
Uh, Jane, I don't know what you're asking about. Oh, for these tops, these are both made in Be So Sporty yarn. Okay, I'm getting a lot of yeses. Thanks, Luna. Yes, you can absolutely add sleeves to the Fernanda. The Fernanda is a stitch pattern that is not worked, that, that doesn't have any shaping to it, so you absolutely could. You would want to figure out how long you wanted your sleeve to be, or how what circumference you would want, and you would pick up along this edge. You could work in any stitch pattern. You could work in the stripe stitch, stitch pattern. You could work uh, just the double crochets. You could do just the um, open mesh, or you could do just the delta stitches. I mean, you could combine them or pick any one of those elements to create a sleeve as well. But yes, you could. And if you wanted to work, now the stitch pattern is worked in rows in this pattern, not in rounds. And sometimes it gets a little complicated to convert a stitch pattern from rows to rounds. Sometimes it's not. But if you are not comfortable converting it from rows to rounds, and this applies to any pattern now, not just this pattern, you could make your sleeve in rows, sew up the seam, and then sew it too. Okay, yes, Martina wants to know if you could make the Fernanda longer. Yes. Now, how would you make a top longer when it's worked side to side? It would be your starting row, right? So this starting row of delta flowers, you would make more delta flowers to make the top longer and then work your rows back and forth. So if you're doing a top-down project like the yellow one, you would work more rows as you're working down when to make it longer. When you want a top that's worked side to side to get longer, your first section, your first row, let's, we'll call those flowers the first row, you would just add more of them. And the, the pattern will also tell is also built around the multiple of the flowers. So everything that you do going forward is based on each flower. So you would still be able to follow along um, the pattern, no problem. Just add more of those delta stitch flowers in the beginning. So on your first row, add more of the first set of petals, which are just kind of bigger and bulkier than foundation ovals. <laughs> Can I use the top part of the off-white from... Okay, Luna, can I use the top part of the off-white from under the bust adapt to Fernanda going down? Okay, I'm guessing you mean the yellow one, right? So the yellow one is Giselle and the green one is Fernanda, but I'm, I'm going to try. So Luna, I swear to God, I have 670 episodes of the podcast and people still call me in the middle of it. <laughs> I'll never understand that. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's get back to this. Um, Luna, you want to start with the Giselle and then end with Fernanda. Yes, you could absolutely do that. So and then let's give a couple of examples of why you would want to do that. What if you wanted to use, I mean, the edging's gorgeous on this one, right? But what if you find another edging that you love and it's a side to side edging? It's worked back and forth in rows and joined as you go, or it's worked back and forth in rows and then you sew it on. So there's all sorts of reasons why you wanna work in multiple directions on a project. And this is something we can do for both of these. So let's start with Giselle. We're gonna start skinny, work our way down in stitch pattern to create that A-line shape, right? And then let's say we wanna go side to side for an edging along the bottom then you would go back and forth in rows. This would be your starting chain, right? It, or foundation ovals or whatever. And you would go back and forth in rows and either join to that edge as you go or make it separate and then sew it on afterwards. So this would be top down and that would be side to side. Does that make sense? And then we can talk about it for the Fernanda too, because the Fernanda, let's say you wanted to put an edging on the Fernanda when you were done, or whatever. Any side-to-side -side project. You make a side-to-side -side project and you wanna put an edging on it. Let's say you just finished this top and you fell in love with the edging on this one, said, I want that edging on this one. No problem. Figure out the multiple and you would start. Well, you wouldn't need, you wouldn't need chains there. Then you would just crochet along this edge 
maybe in single crochets, maybe in double crochets, you'd figure out what the multiple is for the stitch pattern that you wanted to add, and you would squeeze them in, right? So let's say you have, let's say you have, I don't know, let's pick a number. Let's say you have 190 stitches around the circumference of your top, and you need a multiple of 20 for the edging that you want to use. So a multiple of 20 would either be 180 or 210 or 200. So you would either want to decrease along that first round by 10 or increase by 10. And when a pattern says to evenly increase or decrease by a certain number of stitches, that means you don't want to put them all in one spot. You want to spread them out throughout the round. You can figure that out mathematically with a calculator and be precise, or you can just eyeball it. Either way works, it's not a problem. The only thing is you don't want them all in one spot or you'll get some ruffling and puckering. Um, but once you've done that and you've got your multiple and you're ready to go, then you can work top down and work and add your edging. Isn't that great? Or I guess you could still work bottom up and join, join it when you're done with sewing or with slip stitches too. Any more requests on how to combine these? And we could do this with any patterns, right? The thing is, what the reason why I wanted to do this is because I get these questions often in an email or a comment on a comment on a video, and as you can see, it's not a short answer. It is. Um, Pamela, if you fall between sizes for the bust, do you choose the next largest size? That depends on your preference in ease. Another great question. I prefer things tighter in the bust rather than loose, so I prefer negative ease in the first place. If, and if you're not sure what your preference is, measure your bust and measure your favorite tops in your closet. I guarantee you, you'll find out right away. If your bust is bigger than the measurements of those tops or close, you prefer little to no ease or negative ease like me. And if your tops are generally bigger than your bust, then you like positive ease. And there's no wrong way to do this. It's based on what you are comfortable with. So when you, when you figure out what you're comfortable with, that's the way you'll go whether you size up or size down for a, a project. Uh, Yeah, and stomach, hips, bust, whatever. I mean, it applies to all of that. It depends on what your biggest circumference is and depending on which size you'd be wearing and what kind of shape the project is. An A-line shape is way more forgiving than something that nips in at the waist, right? So um, there's lots of other things to consider as well. How do you determine the shoulder on the Ferdanda? Um, how does who determine it, Sherry? You mean you want to adjust the shoulder on the Fernanda? You don't, you want more shoulder or less shoulder than the top? Because there's several ways that you could add more of a shoulder here. Because you could, you could just sew up more of the seam, like you could, you could pull more together and sew along that line the neck shaping I, i'm guess, i'm still not understanding sherry if you want more or less i'm guessing you want less neck and more shoulder you could the simplest solution would be just to sew along that line and make the shoulder wider and the neck opening smaller that would be the easiest and if you don't like sewing you could slip stitch uh seam them together or you could add you know any other types of elements but this is a straight seam there isn't like a there isn't a shoulder strap absolutely just um i got distracted by another comment sorry um you would just just sew more that's all yeah nora i like the off the shoulder look too but not everybody does that's why it's a perfectly fine question to ask and there's it, the, patterns are meant to be a starting point right it is your creative creativity that allows you to adjust a pattern to make it custom for you. That's the beauty about being creative is that you are custom making something for you. Yes, uh, does a pattern 
give you the starting blocks? Yes, but ultimately it's you that chooses the color of the yarn, you that chooses um, how to style something and even how to modify something if the original design doesn't work specifically for you. That's all good stuff. Um, no, Christine, if your stomach is bigger than your bust, you do not change your hook size. No, I do not think that that is, um, I do not think that that is the best decision. I think staying to gauge is definitely a better choice and choosing your size accordingly or modifying a pattern if necessary, but changing your hook size changes your gauge. And I think you could get in a lot more trouble that way if you're not really understanding what you're trying to change. That's my opinion. but everybody can experiment as they like. And if that's something that you want to experiment with, that's fine. Uh, I know lots of people like to experiment. Well, what do you do then? Um, I'm not really sure what your, you want your top, you want a top to be, you want to follow a, a pattern to a specific size and then you want it to get bigger in the uh, waist area. I'm not really sure what you're asking about as far as a silhouette. I don't think that making something I don't think making something a certain size, then bigger here, and then a certain size. I don't think that's the solution at all. I think that that does not sound attractive at all. I think figuring out how to make something A-line a or choosing certain patterns based on the silhouettes. Not everything looks get good on everything. Thing. Um, not everything looks good on everybody. There are things that I don't look good in and there's things that everybody chooses to like and not like. There just might be patterns that you um, would like better. And I know when I'm thicker in the middle, I prefer things that are A-line or things that are generally just not tight in the belly. Um, but if you're looking, I would not just increase your gauge in the belly. I would either stick with A-line or wear things with positive ease and stick with things that are lightweight and drapey. Those are usually better ways to um, camouflage an area of the body that you're not wanting to accentuate or focus on. I hope that helps. Yeah, things that are longer help too, because that way you don't see your waistline. Because I know sometimes if I'm showing muffin top over my pants, I definitely want things that are longer to cover that up. Well, Pamela, she was suggesting changing her hook size in only part of the pattern. That's what I think was going to not look very nice. Uh, Pamela, if you want to try making something bigger by using a larger gauge, that is something you're more than welcome to experiment with. It just, it's possible that it will change the gauge more than what you realize. It's, when you experiment, you run the risk of having things turn out successfully or unsuccessfully, but that's what being creative is all about. I mean, my job is all about experimenting, right? There are times when it works and time when it doesn't, and the more experience I have, the more likely I am to predict to predict when something's going to, an experiment's going to work well. And, and I, that's the same for anybody who's being creative. If you want to try something, absolutely. Uh, would I recommend a darker color for more slimming look in the Giselle? Yes, if you're more comfortable in darker colors, Nora Sue, absolutely. Frogging is part of the learning process. Yes, Pamela, that is absolutely true. Yeah, so if you uh, want to adjust your gauge, you can, but again, it's something that you will run the risk of the unknown, right? If you just want to make a bigger size, that's probably more likely to have the outcome that you want. But if you want to adjust your gauge, then, you know, you're just in uncharted territory and it's possible that you'll get exactly the results you're looking for. Will it change your yardage? Yes. Will it change the size? Yes. Does anybody know how? No. <laughs> a frogging means unraveling, Nora Sue. I'm glad you asked. Isn't that great? Just because, I mean, um, the longer we are in any hobby, right, the more 
terminology we have. So when someone's new to something, I think it's really wonderful to get those reminders that not everybody knows all of the terminology. So thank you for saying that. Yes, frogging for some reason means um, unraveling. I had to do with, I think it's something to do with the ribbit, like rip it. Uh, yeah, rip it, rip it. Yeah, I think that's where it comes from. But yeah, people use that term all the time for talking about unraveling. I really don't use it myself. I say unraveling or take it out. Um, but yes, it is a cute term for unraveling your work. <laughs> Does anybody have any other questions? I'm glad there's been so much conversation today and thank you for all of the questions because I think every time we get to talk about something, whether it's talking about the things that work or don't work or experimenting or uh, it, it's all a great conversation and it's all a, a great way to understand how and why we do things and how to explore things even more. Uh, um, okay, A.M. Sterling's asking about how how to use increases and decreases instead of changing hook size. That depends on the stitch pattern. And sometimes that can be very, um, that can be very easy. And sometimes that can be very difficult. It all depends on the stitch pattern. But yes, you can absolutely add more multiples or take away multiples to create shaping as well. Definitely. Yeah, Christine, we talked about that before, and you we talked about that you could cinch up the shoulder, uh, the neckline, if you thought that might help. Somebody asked to see the yarn again, so I will do that. So here is the limited edition colorway of Be So Fine yarn. This is called A Blaze. We have a fiery orange, beautiful mulberry and soft yellow and gold. Absolutely stunning. And you can find that in Be So Fine yarn in stock on my website today. That is Be So Fine is my number one fingering weight bamboo yarn that's 650 yards per four ounce ball. Comes wound into a center pull ball in a drawstring bag with a pot of Rapture Delicate Wash. And then these are the new colors in stock for Be So Sporty yarn. We have two brand new colors, mint green and aloha blue. And then these gorgeous beauties are back in stock, starting with sandcastle and chocolate truffles, charcoal, uh, chantilly lace, and plumeria. Plumeria is mostly soft yellow with a little bit of blush peach running through it. Very pretty. And you can find all of those on my website with photos already this morning. Got it all taken care of. Does anybody have any other questions? I think we covered a lot today. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed all the demos and all the conversation. Thank you for all the wonderful questions today, everybody. It was made for such a great conversation. And I hope I helped uh, clear up any issues that you might have had about the things that we talked about. If you like this podcast, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel,